Oh, sorry. I thought you were going through trash. Emma showed a triumphant smile, unaware she was making a mistake that would end her life. My name is Sally. I'm 32 years old. I work as a seamstress at a TV and film studio, fixing costumes. The costumes at the studio are diverse, ranging from extravagant period pieces to everyday clothes used in contemporary shows. I alter the designs to fit the era and size them to fit the actors, repairing any wear and tear from filming. My daily work involves handling clothes, using sewing machines and irons. My actual specialty is sewing, though my main job is to fix clothes. I'm also skilled at creating garments from scratch. Since I was young, I learned needlework by watching my mother. That's why I consider this job my true calling. The hours are a bit irregular, and sometimes the demands are unreasonable, but I love my work. I hope to work here forever. I met my husband Joe at this studio. Joe was in charge of taking care of the actors. We are three years apart in age, and since we saw each other every day, we naturally grew closer over time. Two years after we met and amidst our busy schedules, we eventually got married. We began our new life together, but just as the new life started, my mother suddenly fell ill and passed away, forcing Joe and me to postpone our wedding. Originally, we had planned a simple ceremony at a local church with just family, but the delay prompted us to save up for a proper wedding and honeymoon. Given our irregular work schedules, we thought it wasteful to rent a house just to sleep in. So, to save for the wedding and honeymoon, Joe and I started living with his mother, Emma, at his family home. I lost my father early and coincidentally, Joe had the same experience. My mother was the only surviving parent and Joe worried about his mother living alone. I wanted to get along with Emma, but in hindsight that was the beginning of a nightmare. Emma had no intention of getting along with me. In her eyes, I was no different from a thief who had stolen her son. As soon as we moved in, the harassment began. If you cleaned, Sally, what is this? It's so dirty here, there, and over there. I wonder what kind of upbringing you had. Your parents must have been quite something. I endured the harassment, trying to keep up with the cleaning, even causing my hands to crack and bleed. The strictness regarding household chores was unimaginable. Cleaning, laundry, cooking. If anything was even slightly unsatisfactory, no matter how tired. I was, she would make me do it over with a nonchalant face. The more tired I was, the worse the harassment got. No matter how perfectly I did something, she would always find a flaw. I remember scrubbing the sink all night long. It seemed like she was displeased with everything about me. Emma had ordered I do all the household chores. Struggling to balance work and chores, I eventually arranged to work from home. This only escalated Emma's demands. Day in and day out, I was like Cinderella, slaving over household tasks. Is the laundry done? The curtain upstairs is torn. Fix it. You're good at sewing, aren't you, Emma? I'm sorry, I have urgent work. Can't the curtain wait until the weekend? What are you saying? If it's left like that, who knows what the neighbors will say. Fix it right away. I was doing housework while working, or rather, working while doing housework. Often, I had to work through the night because the chores never ended. Emma seemed to thoroughly enjoy watching me become more and more exhausted. She was a perfect sadist, torturing me with her harassment, especially during the daytime when Joe was not around. The relationship between Emma and I was like that of an owner and a maid. I did all the housework. I had pride and couldn't easily confide in Joe. I did my best to fulfill my role, but more than the physical string of the chores, there was something, something even more mentally taxing. Occasionally, Emma would invite neighbors over for lunch, and those were truly like hell. Emma was even harsher in front of the neighbors. From their conversation, I could hear them badmouthing me. Seriously, she's such a terrible daughter-in-law. I have to educate her every single day. My son is blind to it. 
but I'm not fooled. She's just so unlikable and lacking in common sense. I listened to the neighbor's laughter, chiming in as if in agreement and thought to myself, who's the one lacking common sense? Once housework is done, it's done, but their harsh words linger heavily on my heart. Honestly, I felt like I was reaching my limit every day. If this continued, I felt like I might lose my mind, but that wasn't all. Joe has an older sister, Sarah, who's 38. Sarah lived with her boyfriend in a nearby town. If I were to describe Sarah in one word, it'd be stingy. She would come to eat lunch at our house almost every day, probably to save money. The worst part was her unannounced visits. Since I never knew when she was coming, I couldn't have her portion of the meal ready. She would casually eat my food and leave. Everything she owned was hers. Everything at her parents' house was hers. She would just take anything that was at the house. Perfect, I was just running out of Kleenexes. I'll take these. But Sarah, I just bought those for Emma. Then I get a glaring look. What are you talking about? You're always home, aren't you? Just go buy more. Like mother, like daughter. It's a wonder how Joe turned out so well. The biggest problem was when she would take dinner ingredients without asking. Every time I had to stop my chores and work to go shopping again. One day I couldn't take it anymore. Sarah, could you please let me know before you take something? Apparently she told Emma about it. Did you tell Sarah not to come over anymore? What? No, I didn't say that. So you're saying Sarah's lying? Caught between Sarah's lies and Emma's cruelty, Emma alone would be hell, but when you put the two of them together, the mental burden continued. One day, as I passed by the room where the two were talking, I overheard them talking loud enough so I could hear. It's like having a free maid. How nice. I'm jealous. Send her to my house, too. Maid? Am I not a daughter-in-law? I had thought of myself as a maid, but hearing it said out loud was unbearable. Something inside me snapped. That night, I finally poured out my feelings to Joe. I can't do this anymore. I've been patient, but I can't live with Emma any longer. Please, I want to live somewhere else. After a moment of silence, Joe said, Okay, we've saved enough money. Let's move out soon. Really? I'll start looking for a place right away. Tears of relief streamed down my face. Unbeknownst to us, Emma was standing right outside our room. We had no idea this would lead to her bizarre behavior later on. From that day on, the days that had been so oppressive suddenly began to shine. I had one dream. I wanted to wear a wedding dress I made myself for my wedding. After all, sewing was my profession. After talking with Joe, filled with motivation, I immediately ordered a large amount of fabric online. I decided to focus on making the dress as my new purpose. That's what I decided. I started sewing the dress secretly in my room, away from Emma and Sarah. But one day Sarah, who often dropped by unannounced, caught me. What's this dress? It's nice to have your own dress. Hey, Sally, I'm getting married in two months. Make my dress, too. Really? Yes, renting is just a waste of money. I want to keep costs low for the wedding, so please. Typical Sarah, always looking to save money. I hesitated but agreed to make it since she would cover the material costs. I started making Sarah's dress first, as our wedding was still far off. Sarah told me to keep this a secret from Mom. It seemed she planned to tell Emma she was renting the dress and get financial support from her, whatever material costs. She paid me. She was determined to recoup. Stinginess to this extent is almost impressive. I even talked to Joe about this situation. His response was, Sis never backs down once she decides something. I'm sorry, but it would really help if you could make it for her. Feeling positive, I answered with a smile, leave it to me, I'll do my best. I was getting paid, so I felt motivated. I thought of it as practice for making my own dress without spending on materials. 
I also had a little bit of hope that this might improve my relationship with Sarah, so I immersed myself in dressmaking between housework and my main job. Even Emma seemed to realize what I was up to. She occasionally peeked into my room. Sarah's wedding was approaching fast, and the dress was nearly complete. Then one day, Emma appeared in my room with a smile. You're working hard again today, aren't you tired? Yes, a bit. Her sudden change in demeanor was unsettling. I'm going to make some coffee. Why don't you take a break? Really? That would be great. Thank you. No worries at all. I'll bring it to you later. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. As Emma left humming, I felt a strange unease. Emma making coffee for me? That's never happened before. Could it be something more sinister? Different thoughts raced through my mind, but there was no point worrying. I decided to get back to work. I was just adding the final touches of lace. The end was in sight. Despite it being Sarah's dress, I found myself putting love into it. Suddenly, I smelled coffee. Emma knocked on the door. Sally, may I come in? Oh, what is it? The next moment, I was shocked. Emma entered with a tray piled high with cups and saucers, all filled with coffee. Emma, wait, it wasn't just for two. It looked like she was preparing for a party. The tray was so heavy her arms trembled as I instinctively moved to stop her from entering further. Hoops. Emma pretended to trip. The sound of cups breaking and coffee splashing everywhere filled the room. For a moment I couldn't comprehend what happened. Everything felt like slow motion. Looking down, my yellow-colored dress was stained like a giraffe pattern. Ah! I screamed involuntarily. I didn't miss the brief smile on Emma's face. Oh no, I'm so sorry. It wasn't on purpose. Did you get burned? Wait, is that a dress? I thought you were going through trash. I was speechless. The shock of her actions left me frozen. Then Emma feigned concern. Oh dear, you can't have your wedding like this, can you? My suspicions turned into certainty. Emma was trying to sabotage our wedding. Her plan was to ruin our plans to move out after the wedding. But I couldn't afford to be angry now. I rushed to the bathroom with the stained dress. I frantically rinsed the coffee off. I knew the stain would set if I didn't act quickly. Emma watched with a malicious grin. Need any help? No, I'm fine, I replied coldly. I was in anger and panic. Then someone appeared behind Emma. What's this? Are you bullying Sally again? It was Sarah. No, I just accidentally spilled coffee on her dress, Emma said with apparent enjoyment. This was bad, but the situation took an unexpected turn. What? Are you serious? That's my dress. Wait, what? Emma was speechless. Yours, Sarah? What do you mean? I can't believe this. I had her make my dress. What am I going to do? My wedding is in two weeks. Emma was panicking like I'd never seen before. There's no way. While listening to their ridiculous exchange, I continued to wash the dress I had been working on for months for my sister-in-law. As I washed the dress, I thought to myself, I hadn't told anyone I was making the dress for Sarah, so Emma must have thought the dress was for me. She wouldn't have deliberately spilled coffee otherwise. If she had known it was for Sarah, there'd be no reason to ruin it. Joe and I planned to leave this dreaded family home after the wedding. To Emma, I was always the thief cat who stole her beloved son. She couldn't bear the thought of the woman she saw as a mere maid taking her son away. She thought by sabotaging our wedding her son would stay home. Such petty thoughts led to her bizarre actions. Sarah was furious, blaming Emma and attacking her. How could you do this? Everything is ruined. I can't believe my own mother would destroy my wedding. I'm sorry, Sarah. Please forgive me. I didn't know it was your dress. You don't think I did it on purpose, do you? Emma finally spoke her true feelings. While listening, I pretended not to hear and continued washing the dress. 
Then you thought it was Sally's dress and deliberately stained it, a man's voice echoed. Everyone turned around at once. Oh, Joe, when did you get here? So that's what happened, Mom. Joe stood there with an indescribable expression. I was so focused on washing the dress and listening to their argument that I hadn't noticed Joe's arrival. At the perfect moment, he had been silently observing the ugly quarrel between his mother and sister. Joe slowly began to speak, looking utterly disappointed. You saw Sally working hard on that dress every night, and yet you deliberately stained it. That's truly despicable. It's not like that. This is, don't make excuses, Joe shouted. Emma and Sarah were taken aback. Emma, in particular, had probably never imagined being yelled at by her son, whom she cherished so much. Joe continued calmly yet sadly, I'm disappointed, Mom. Sally had been enduring your attitude all this time, and we both hoped that one day you might change. Sally was patient for my sake. Because you're my mom, hearing this, I felt tears welling up. I had somewhat seen Joe as indecisive and too submissive to his mother, but that was a complete misconception. Before me stood a man determined to protect the woman he loved. Joe's firm stance, though out of place in the situation, made me fall for him all over again. He continued addressing Emma, and it all comes down to this. I can't just overlook it, Mom. Sorry, but Sally and I are leaving this place as soon as possible. I plan to stay here until the wedding for your sake, but I can't stay any longer. This time it was just a dress, but who knows? Sally could be in danger next time. It'll be too late then, Mom. Danger? I would never put her in danger. How can you even say that after ruining Sally's hard work so casually? Joe's anger was palpable, but this was his mother. Instead of using abusive language or an overbearing attitude, Joe quietly vented his anger on Emma. His expression was something I had never seen before, anger mixed with an indescribable sadness. He was denying everything about his mother, who had always doted on him. Emma seemed deeply affected. She was speechless, reduced to tears. Emma, who was usually quick with aggressive remarks, was now crying. Sarah was also stunned, alternating her gaze between Joe and Emma. Later, Sarah canceled her wedding since it was so close to the date, and she was not getting any of her money back. It's not my fault at all. Emma was the one who paid for it so Sarah wasn't losing any money. Emma seemed to finally regret her thoughtless harassment that had spiraled out of control. The shock of being scolded by her son also left her quite weakened. But the issue wasn't confined to our house. Sarah's sudden cancellation angered her boyfriend and his family. Eventually, Sarah ended up breaking up with him. Emma was continually blamed by Sarah for this outcome. After we left the family home, Emma occasionally contacted us. She was asking for money. One reason she didn't want us to leave was the financial aspect. While living together, we contributed to the household expenses, but Emma had no income apart from her pension. It seemed she had been relying on our money. However, every time Emma called asking for money, Joe refused. Mom, why don't you work? There are plenty of jobs out there. We need to be independent, you and us. Please, leave us alone. Emma pleaded not to be abandoned, but Joe remained firm. His resolve seemed to stem from a sense of duty. Later, Emma started working as a janitor. Her strictness with cleaning seemed to fit the job, which was ironically a bit amusing. Sarah, after breaking up with her boyfriend and moving out of their apartment, returned to live with Emma. She completely stopped working, relying on Emma's part-time income and pension. I saw her once, and she was unrecognizably overweight. Joe and I moved into an apartment and are enjoying our new happy life. There's no one here who makes snide remarks or be sarcastic. Our life now is so blissful compared to our time in that dysfunctional family home. 
we finally set a date for our wedding. We decided on a small ceremony with just friends and colleagues and chose not to invite Emma and Sarah. We didn't want any disturbances, especially considering both are in a dark place right now. But that's just how it has to be. They brought it upon themselves. I started making a new dress for the big day. It's going to be much more beautiful than the one that ended up with a giraffe pattern.